Welcome to the Victorious Life TV broadcast. I'm Lisa Boldo and I want to welcome you to this episode tonight. Hang on, let me just make sure. Sorry. Okay, there we go. Tonight in this broadcast, I want to talk to you about taking a stand against sickness. This is something that the Lord put on my heart, oh my gosh, early this morning and you know, I've just been meditating and meditating on the Word of God all day long regarding this subject. And this is something that as believers, it's time, I'm telling you, and you can type in the comments, it's time that we take a stand against sickness. Too many believers are passive when it comes to you know, sickness and disease, and even so many people are, um, they're even, they're even, some people think that God is punishing them or that they, uh, they deserve it somehow or that God is getting glory from this, from them being sick. That is not our God. That is not what Jesus did. You know, I'm really excited, um, and, and I'm just glad that you guys are jumping on tonight because yes, it's time, it's time. Somebody just wrote, it's time. And I see you guys jumping on, and I just love each and every one of you. And you know, I'm excited about this. And you know, I talk about healing probably more than anything else because everywhere you look, people around us are sick and they just don't have to be. You don't have to be. I'm telling you, I've seen too much. It's too late for someone to tell me or to, to sway me off of God's word. I've seen too much. And so I know that the word of God is true. And Father, right now in Jesus' name, Lord, I just pray that your word that goes forth tonight, Lord, will touch every single heart and will be deeply implanted. And I declare and decree the enemy will not come and steal this word tonight, Lord, but that Believers will, will start recognizing that it is time and they will take their rightful position as a son of God, as a daughter of God, and just demonstrate your kingdom here on the earth and show people how much you love them, Ugh, just like Jesus did. So again, thank you so much for watching tonight. And Lord, we just magnify your name. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Glory to God. So everywhere we look on this earth today, people are sick. They're, they're, you know, they've got disease or maybe, you know, some are in a wheelchair or whatever the case is. And there's, there's all different kinds of forms of sickness. But you know, the beautiful thing about Jesus is, and I mentioned this last week, he taught, he preached, and he healed all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And, you know, for example, um, casting out devils, that deliverance, that's healing. It's still under the subject of healing. He taught, he preached, he demonstrated by healing, right? Okay, so we know that sickness came into the world after the fall of Adam. So, you know, it's true that the root of sickness is sin, however, not every person that is sick is, it, it didn't, okay, not every person that is sick is sick because of sin in their life. Now, sometimes that is the case. For example, if you fall and break your leg because you were drunk, well, you know, I'm just saying. Sometimes you can fall and break your leg or your rotator cuff like I did two years ago just because it was an accident, right? In those cases, that is not because of a sin in someone's life. And what I would say is if you know that you're trapped in sickness because of sin, for example, I'm just saying people, and I'm not picking on smokers, but people that smoke, many times they end up with things like emphysema or worse. I don't even want to, you know, declare those things. But listen, you can get rid of that. It's an addiction, right? The enemy has gotten a strong hold on you. How do you break that? You repent for coming into agreement with the enemy and you command that addiction to go and you choose to get rid of it. Get rid of it and I'm telling you, God's power is then released and boom, you are on your way to health and wholeness. Just saying. So, you know, many times... All right, 
I want to stay on point here because you know I could go off in a lot of different directions here but I was saying that not all sickness is caused by you know a direct result of someone someone sinning and sometimes it's just an unclean spirit and there are many instances in the Bible and I'm just gonna grab a couple of them to, to just refer you to this in the Gospel of Luke Jesus told the woman who was bent over right she had a spirit of infirmity now that was a devil she had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years and she was bent over right as soon as Jesus cast out that devil that unclean spirit psh, she was instantly healed and many times when you cast out a devil a person is instantly healed because they're free they're free however you know Again, we want to be renewing our minds. If you want to walk like Jesus or you want to walk in the fullness of the kingdom of God, you got to renew your mind. You got to know what God's word says. And like I said, the Word of Promise audio Bible is just, you know, as I'm driving, I love listening to that. It's an app on your phone. I think I paid like, I don't know, I think I paid like 20 bucks for it. It's worth its weight in gold because it's like you're watching a movie and you're 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 just getting like the fullness of everything that's going on you know and, and sometimes I just get overwhelmed to tears I know I, I say that all the time and it's the truth you know you hear the words of Jesus and then sometimes you know things just jump out at me and I'm like oh I need to hear that again it could be like one word or one sentence and boom it's another layer that of you know revelation of that God is revealing knowledge to me and he will do the same for you and or if you're reading the word the same thing happens scriptures psh, jump off the pages because they could be for you in that moment okay so that was one example and then in Luke 9 Jesus casted out the unclean spirit from the boy who had seizures right and the, the, the that that spirit would throw him into the fire and convulse him and all this stuff since he was a young boy and so Jesus casted out that spirit it was a spirit now you know you might say well how do I know listen if you're gonna lay hands on the sick or you're you know ministering healing to someone you know because you may not know whether it's a spirit or whether it's Whatever it is, Jesus said, you will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So I'm just saying what I like to do is just say, in the name of Jesus, I command, you know, any unclean spirit to leave you now in Jesus name. And then I will speak to the body part and command that thing to be made whole, whatever it is. You know, I had mentioned, I, I don't know if, um, if you uh, oh what was the app that I mentioned oh I'm so sorry about that I'm seeing a comment there it's called the Word of Promise audio Bible and it's only the New Testament so that was that's the app and uh, so anyway um, it's really awesome because like I said you it's like you have a movie going on and you're just getting you know the it's just awesome so in any event um, so I was just saying you know Jesus casted devils out of so many people and then you know there were a lot of instances where it just says he laid hands on them and healed them all sometimes he didn't lay hands on them at all sometimes he just sent his word boom and healed them right the 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 daughter of the woman you know the the woman that came to Jesus the Syrophoenician woman she said my daughter is vexed with a devil you know please help me and Jesus go your way you know your daughter's been healed and at first he said it's not right to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs what he meant by that was and he said I've only been sent to the lost uh, house of Israel right the people of Israel but the woman you know he wasn't calling her a dog he was just saying that that you know well a Gentile if you will like that she was not included in the house of Israel and he said it's not right to take the children's bread you are a child of God healing is your bread Jesus said I am the bread of heaven that came down from you know I'm the bread that came down from heaven and healing is the children's bread healing is God Jesus is health life right the Word of God he is the Word of God I know I'm throwing a lot out here right now but I speak from my heart and sometimes but you guys hear me here and I hope you're understanding what I'm saying but guess what he didn't leave that woman hanging she said Lord please help me and he said woman how great is your faith 
because she said, yes, she goes, but even, even the dogs get the crumbs off the children's table, right? And he said, oh, woman, how great is your faith? Go, your daughter has been, you know, healed, that the devil has left your daughter, and boom. So he never laid hands on her daughter. So, you know, that tells me you can come on behalf of your children, or you can command a devil to depart from someone's child if they come to you. Listen, it happened in the Bible. Jesus said, those who believe will do the works that I do, and even greater, because I go to be with the Father. He said that in John 14, 12. Okay, so... Jesus healed everywhere he went. He healed in the temple. He healed in the streets. He healed everywhere, right? He even raised a widow's only son during a funeral procession. He had compassion on her. Can you imagine that? The funeral, is, you know, they're going by. He's walking in the street. He sees this. He just walks over to the coffin. He put his hand in and said, young man, arise. And immediately the boy got up and he gave the boy back to his mother. That is our Jesus. So when people say they don't want to hear about him, they don't want to know about him, they have the wrong, they've been taught incorrectly. He never put sickness on anybody. He healed everywhere he went. He healed everyone who asked for healing. He didn't say, no, you're not good enough. No, you need to pray a little bit longer. No, you need to, you know, learn the word. No, he didn't do any of that. He did teach them and he preached. But every person that wanted healing, he would heal them. And in some instances, he would say, okay, now you have been healed. Now sin no more or something worse can happen to you, right? There was a man in John 5 who uh, in John chapter 5, a man who was lame for 38 years. And Jesus said to him, do you want to be well, right? Pick up your mat and walk. And he healed him. He healed him. And then Jesus found him in the temple later and said, see, you have been made well. He said, now don't sin anymore, lest a worse thing happen to you. So in that case, that tells me that, that some, there was sin in that man's life. But guess what? Jesus healed him and then said, you know, in some cases he told them, then healed them, and in a lot of cases he healed them and then told them. But either way, the point of healing was to demonstrate how much God loves them and how much God loves you. Now, I got to talk about this. I talked about, you know, the whole point of this message tonight is taking a stand against sickness. Take a stand. How do you even do that, right? Because so many people are saying, Lord, heal me, or Lord, if it's your will to heal me, it's always his will to heal, heal you. How do I know that? First of all, he paid for your healing in full with his blood, with his life, okay? If it wasn't his will for you to be healed, the scripture would not be there by his stripes, all those stripes on his back. And, and the Bible says he was marred. He was disfigured more than any human being ever has been. He didn't even look human. Oh my gosh. He did it for you. He did it for me. He did it for us. He was, you know, God that came down from heaven. He didn't have to do that. But God is a loving God. And because Adam gave Satan authority... Satan would have still had authority had Jesus not come and showed us God loves you. And I'm telling you, listen to me. You know, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, that Jesus was saying, listen, listen, let those who have ears to hear, hear. Right? And so, okay, too many believers are passive when it comes to sickness and disease and or healing. Right? And a lot of times... Um, Okay, Jesus paid the price, first of all. He doesn't want you to be passive. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 19, whatever you bind on earth will be for, you know, bound in heaven. Whatever you permit on the earth will be permitted. Whatever you allow. Listen, in Luke 10, 19, Jesus said, I give you authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. But you know something? The minute sickness hits, we forget that we have authority. Listen, I, you know, I know that we have authority, 
But I'm telling you, you've got to start practice living this way. You've got to practice exercising your authority. That's like your spiritual muscles, right? If you want to get strong in the physical, you got to lift some weights. You want to get strong in the spiritual, you learn God's word, you speak it, you declare it, you believe it, and you don't tolerate sickness, and you go out and get other people healed by laying your hands on them and tell them, you can you know, say to them, listen, I'm a man or I'm a woman just like you. But God works through me because Jesus gave me his authority. And as a, as a believer, Jesus has given me his authority. But it's Jesus that does, it's his power that's released. Be careful never ever to take glory. You know, Jesus is the one that took the nails and paid with his blood, with his life. He gets all the glory. And God the Father gets all the glory through Jesus in you through you okay well, you and I are God's representatives on the earth here today he's got to work through us so it's time to take a stand against sickness and not be passive and stop blaming you know here's another thing <clears throat> because of wrong teaching people actually believe that God you know puts sickness on them to either punish them or or that somehow it's bringing him glory it never brings glory to God. Think about this, Jesus paid for you to be healed. First Peter 2.24, by his stripes you were healed. It's a done deal. But how are you going to get it to manifest? First of all, you got to believe it because it's true. It's what he did. It's done. Okay, how do you get that to manifest? Again, whatever you allow will be allowed. Whatever you don't, won't. You got to speak. You speak right? God's power is released. It's headed for the target. And you don't speak contrary. Anytime you say or do anything that's contrary to God's word, it will put you in bondage. It will put you in bondage. Okay. So what about, for example, people that are in wheelchairs, right? You know, I know it's a sensitive subject or people that, you know, get this disease. And some people say, but what about children? Again, we've got, and there's a nasty devil out there on this earth that, and you know what his, his MO is? He wants to discredit God by attacking believers. Listen to me carefully. Boy, God put this on my heart today. He wants to discredit God by attacking people who say they believe in God because then when they don't know how to get healed, then, or they're saying, well, maybe God, you know, allowed this. Those people are like, ew, what kind of God is that? I don't want no part of him if he puts sickness on you. Do you see how people misrepresent God? No. We've got to learn that. I'm telling you, you need to learn what this word says. Jesus said, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. You will lay hands on, believers will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. If you believe, he said, the same works that I do and even greater works will you do because I go to be with my father but how's that gonna happen you gotta you gotta understand that Christ the Spirit of God is in you and you when you speak you gotta know and, and I'm telling you mm, and persecution will come family members the enemy oh he and listen this isn't to give any credit to the enemy but I'm telling you how he works he will get people closest to you to call you a nut job people that you care about people that you love because they don't believe but guess what if you stay consistent I think about people again like Smith Wigglesworth John G Lake you know what if they could have been swayed off of the Word of God we would have never heard of them right you got to, you need to, we need to grow into um, the image really of Jesus so that everywhere we go, lives are being touched and people understand that God loves them. He wants them well. And listen, not everybody wants to be healed because they might lose disability or they might. I remember a woman who got healed last summer um, at the hospital and she was all kind of, you know, bent over. I had her video up for about, I don't know, maybe an hour, and she asked me to take it down because she had a lawsuit pending. And if anybody saw that video, she would lose whatever her case, she would have no more case. And I was, 
Mm. And it really, it, it hurt. And I, I hope that someday she realized that she chose the world's way as opposed to giving God the glory that she was absolutely healed. She was healed right in an elevator. She walked all the way to her car without her cane and she was in awe of God. You know, we don't have that much time left, but I just, I wanna say, I've seen too much. Two years ago, I tore my rotator cuff, my right rotator cuff. I fell going up the steps to my office and I knew that I did something really bad, right? I knew I tore something. Well, after an MRI, and I did nothing about it for three months until it got to the point where it was absolutely unbearable. And I'm telling you, I would feel the presence of God hovering over me saying, why are you putting up with this? And it was true. Why was I putting up with it? I couldn't even move my arm past here. It was awful. And I tell you, I went through, uh, I did have an MRI. It was uh, partially torn and I, it was awful. And I knew, I knew that physical therapy was not going to heal me. I knew that. And I would say to the Lord, Lord, I know it's going to be a suddenly, and it's almost like I wasn't ready to just receive my healing. I didn't have anybody lay hands on me because I knew I didn't need to. I've seen too much. I was healed. Anyway, I don't want to jump from one story to the next, but eight months later, there came a day and I was at a conference and I just, I was like, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready. And my friend Trisha was standing right next to me. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I said, Lord, on a count to three, I said, I am ready. And I said, and when I count to three, I am going to lift my arm all the way up and I am getting my healing. And I mean, I meant it. There was no room for anything else except what I was saying. And I meant it from my heart and God knew I meant it. And I said, one, two, three. And I just, Ugh! and I made my arm. And I mean, my arm went all the way up and I was like, ah, cause there was no way. There was no way. I, I, could not even lift it a little bit past my lower back, even after 24 sessions of physical therapy. And I knew in that moment, I was totally and completely healed. But what happened for eight months? I was passive. I put up with it. I tolerated it. And there's been other times, you know, with symptoms of asthma. And I'm telling you, when the Lord showed me in Spain, you know, I was having asthma attacks every day. I'm like, what is going on? And the Lord said to me, you partnered with fear. And I was like, mm. so what did I do? I repented for partnering with fear. And I was like, no, I don't allow this. I don't allow this. I'm telling you, you've got my, my friend, you've got to start saying, and you can declare it every day. I don't allow sickness. I don't allow sickness. I don't allow it. And if there's anything going on in your body, you command that evil spirit to leave. If you have to repent for having come into agreement with the enemy for whatever, do that first. Command that evil spirit to leave now and then speak to your body part and command it to be healed in Jesus' name and say, it. that's it and it will be no other way and that's it. And I'm telling you, you will be healed. You will see the manifestation because that's how you release God's power and then it's headed for the target. Don't come into agreement with anything different. And you, many of you know the story. You probably see this uh, right here, this little, it's just a mark. There's not even any more scar tissue. But seven years ago, I had a cyst removed twice, and, but there was a root there and it grew back a third time. And I was like, uh, no, mm -mm. and I'm telling you, I cursed the seed and the root of this thing and I commanded it to die. And I said, and I am not going to check it. Because the first two times, you know, I had surgery on it twice. Why? I prayed over it, but what was I doing? In the name of Jesus. And then I'd go, did it? I was being double-minded. God showed me that. And it was like, no. And I was like, uh, no, that's it. I cursed the seed and the root of this thing. But did I do it right away? No. I was passive and I tolerated it for a little while until I just was done tolerating it just like this. I'm telling you, it's time to take a stand Whatever you don't allow won't be allowed. And you need to get to a point where you say, no, I don't allow it. I don't allow sickness. You know, I've not had even one asthma symptom for, gosh, it's been weeks now since I had done that video on that Thursday. And I said to you, out of nowhere that morning, I was attacked with asthma symptoms and I knew it was the devil, Ugh! right? But immediately I sat up in bed where, you know, a long time ago, 
If that would have happened, it would have taken me, I don't know, over an hour fighting with the devil. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. I used to fight with the devil and be like, Ugh. and then I'd get tired of fighting with him and then I'd go and hit my inhaler. No, I refuse. Not doing it. What I did was I sat up and I said, in the name of Jesus, I said, I don't allow this. I'm telling you that scripture. Don't allow it. Say, I, I said, I don't allow this. I said, in Jesus name, I command you devil, you get out, you get off me right now in Jesus name. This is what I did, but you can't stop there. It's not enough, you know, and don't just say, I rebuke you, devil, because a rebuke is a correction. You're just saying, I correct you, devil, and he's like, yeah, and? You, you, no, you have to tell him what to do. I said, you get out in Jesus' name. You get out, you get off, get it, you do not touch me. You, I don't allow you, I'm, you're not allowed. And then I said, lungs, I'm speaking to you. In Jesus' name, I said, I command you, my lungs. I command you to breathe perfectly, normally, you know. And it was like, it just opened right up. And I didn't have to fight with the enemy at all. And I'm telling you, the same thing will happen for you. For you. I just want to see what else I have here. Hmm. You know, I said I had surgery on it twice, right? And I did. And here's the thing, though. Surgery removed it, but it didn't kill the root. That's why it kept growing back. If you ever have something that keeps coming back in the same place, it's because there's a root there. There's a root and you need to kill it. How do you kill it? With your words. You believe in your heart, you speak, and boom, that thing doesn't have a chance. You don't allow it. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. You kill it right? And you know, Matthew eleven twelve says the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And that is what I'm talking about. Not permitting the enemy to, uh, to have his way in your life and in the life of those that you love. You know, I I'm just saying you, you know, mm, Lord, Lord, I just thank you for this message. I thank you so much. And I really hope, you know, let me know in the comments. Has this blessed you tonight? Did you get anything out of this? I really hope so. Because I'm telling you, the enemy wants to discredit God by attacking believers so that people of the world are like, heck no, I don't want your God. Look, what, look at you. Uh-uh. I'm telling you, and it's because we... we we become passive and and you know so many people and people of the world especially they're blaming god for something that is purely the devil and then a lot of people are like well you know if it was god's will then he would just heal them it is his will and he's given you the tools he paid with his life and then he left it to us <laughs> right believers we got to we got to do what the word says so anyway I just love you. I bless you. I thank you for joining me tonight. Let me know what you took away from this. And like I said, you know, I talk about healing probably more than anything else because so many people are sick. And you know, okay, this was just something that came to mind too is that sometimes people say, yeah, but that was Jesus who spoke that to the apostles or, you know, to the people that were with him. You know, that was for them, but it's not for us. Oh, but it was for us and it is for us because Jesus said in John 17, 20, my prayer is not for them alone, meaning the apostles, right? The disciples. He said, I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. Mm. He said that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, right? May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me, right? He said, I've given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me so that the world may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Isn't that beautiful? That's our Jesus. That is how much God loves you. Mm. Okay, well, 
that's the message for tonight. So if this has been a blessing to you, I ask you to share it on your social media. And I just love you and I bless you in Jesus' name. You know, I can pray for you. and just, But just remember that as a believer, you don't need someone to lay hands on you. You need to be laying hands on people. But I'm happy to pray for you as well. So right now, in Jesus' name, I command any unclean spirit that is has been attacking any under the sound of my voice, I command you, unclean spirit, to leave them now. I command it to leave you now in Jesus' name. And I command your body to be made whole. Mm. Your body and your mind in Jesus' name from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, every cell of your body, be healed and made whole in Jesus' name. And so be it. Amen and amen. And I will see you next time. God bless you. I'll talk to you soon. Good night.